Hello, hello, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you so much for joining me again for another Inspirational Thursday. If this is your first time, thank you, thank you, and welcome, welcome to Inspirational Thursday. God has a word for us today, and I'm excited about just sharing and encouraging and to God be the glory. Before we go into the word of God, let's go into a word of prayer. God, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. We thank you for your word. Your word is the light unto our path. It's a lamp unto our feet. God, I ask that you will hide me behind your cross, that you will teach and do what you can only do, God, and expire and, and captivate your people, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you for being here. We welcome you. We ask that you have your way. We ask that you will do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus, we seal this prayer with the precious blood of Jesus. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Glory to God. You guys, I will have the scripture on the screen. If you do not have your Bible or if you're not able to get to a Bible, I will have the scripture on the screen so you, are, you guys can follow me. So yes, let's dive into the living word of God. It's active, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-headed sword. Let's dive into the word of God. We're going to be looking into the book of John, John chapter 4, verse 24. It says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth, God is looking for true worshipers, people that will truly worship God in spirit and in truth. The only way that you can worship God and I can worship God is me being a part of the kingdom family. Is me accepting him into my person, into my life as him being my personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You see, my sisters and brothers, whenever you confess that you are a sinner and you need a savior and you ask God to forgive you and cleanse you, the Holy Spirit steps into our temple and it cleanses us and it leads us and it guides us in all truth. So salvation is the number one, the number one, the first step. This is the key principle to truly worshiping God in spirit and in truth. You have to be a believer. You have to be a Christian. You have to be redeemed through the blood in order to know how to worship God in spirit and in truth. However, there are different steps that we have to take as believers. We cannot miss a day without praying, without reading our word. We can't go on like a week or a month without fasting and prayer. The word of God says some things only go God. Only going to come by fasting and prayer. And we also know that worship is a lifestyle. Whatever you do at home is what you're going to do outside around other individuals. So those things of, of praying, fasting, reading the word of God every day, praying is worship. Is worship. Feeding your spirit, man, with the word of God. Turning on worship music throughout the day throughout the night whatever as you're running your errands just loving on god and letting god love on you and having a repentive life day in and day out you truly have to have a repentive life you have to repent before god that is a, a, the second principle of worshiping god in spirit and in truth is having a heart of repentance and a heart of rededication to God. Sometimes we have to rededicate ourselves back to him because we have gone astray. We've done things and we've practiced sin and we lived a life of sin and we just did things and on top of things, on top of things, and we still say that we were Christians. So we really, really need to take an examination of our heart to, to for us to really see, are we truly worshiping God, like the word of God says, in spirit and in truth? Because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And another key principle to worshiping God in spirit and in truth is your giving. How do you give to God? How do you give to strangers? How do you give to people that you know? Do you have a heart posture of having the right motives? Are you truly giving from your heart? Are you truly just doing what we're supposed to do as the lip, as as disciples? Are we truly coming humbly? That is a part of worshiping God in spirit and in truth as well. And as we are doing those things, giving 
to, to strangers, giving to the poor, helping the widows, helping the, the homeless or whatever or however the Lord leads us to do it. We have to make sure that we are doing it in a heart posture, in a, in a loving heart posture. That is a part of worshiping God because the word of God says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So when we are doing those things, fasting, praying, reading our word, praying, um, um, giving, helping, whatever we need to do, walking in, top, walking in our spiritual gifts, God is inhabiting. He's inhabiting the praises that we are giving to him from a heart of posture. We have to have a heart posture of love. We have to have a heart posture of love. Those are the worshipers God himself is looking for. Those that would truly worship him in spirit and in truth. Those who love God and love his people. Those who love the word of God because you have to love God to love the word and everything else will fall in place. You'll have an excitement about prayer. You won't drag to get to prayer. You won't complain to get to prayer. You won't look at your watch and say, oh, I've prayed two hours. I've prayed five minutes. And it's not about the Lent. It's about your faith and it's about your heart and it's about your worship. People of God, starting with me, we have to get to a place to where we are truly, truly honoring the risen, the risen, wrecked Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we have to truly be who God has called us to be. And in order for our blessings to manifest, it starts in the spiritual realm and it manifests in the natural, we have to line up. We have to line up. We have to worship God in spirit and in truth and everything else will fall in place. Everything else will fall in place. The word of God says, as we seek the kingdom of God first, and his righteousness, everything else will be added into our lives. So my brothers and my sisters, I pray the perfect will of God, that salvation is your portion, that you are worshiping God in spirit and in truth, that his, that his presence is leading you and guiding you in all truth, that you have a heart desire, you have a a fire burning desire to fast, to pray, to study the word of God every day, to worship him in spirit and in truth, to worship him in giving, to worship him with your time, whatever you do, worship God in spirit and in truth. I thank God for this opportunity to share this encouraging message. God bless each and every last one of you. God, we thank you and we honor you for who you are. We thank you that you have given us a word to hold on, God, a word to remind us that they that worship you must worship you in spirit and in truth. And if there's anyone who is watching and listening to this message, I pray, God, that salvation will knock on the door of their hearts and that they will open up that door and allow you to come in and that you will be with them until eternity. And their journey of worshiping you in spirit and in truth will start today. God, I thank you. I honor you. I give you praise, honor, and glory for my brothers and my sisters. We glorify you. We exalt your name. We seal this prayer with the precious blood of Jesus. Until we meet again, my brothers and my sisters, be encouraged, be empowered, and be reminded that God loves you and I love you too. I will be seeing you guys on the next Inspiration of Thursday. God bless you and have an amazing day in the Lord. Hallelujah.